And finally, a build for my wife. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I can't tell you how excited I am to be able to share this build with you. I've probably been planning this bed for about two years and it took me about two months working evenings and some weekends to be able to get it just right. So all you've seen me do so far is rough out the legs for the bed out of this eight quarter walnut. I found it really easy to do this on the bandsaw, but my track saw worked really well for shaping the longer parts. And then my templates were used just to refine the final shape. So once everything was sanded and routed, I did clamp both legs together as a set just so I could refine the shape into its final look. With the legs done, I started milling up my material that I would use for the headboard and footboard of the bed. I'll have the SketchUp files available for this bed on my website. You could technically build this whole thing out of dimensional lumber as the walnut's final dimensions ended up just around three quarters of an inch and the material that I used for the leg and for the top and bottom rails was somewhere around one and a half inches once everything was milled down. I clamped up all my materials so I could figure out where I would install the dominoes, which I used for joinery on both the headboard and the footboard. This walnut required a lot of epoxy work just to fill in all the imperfections. So I put tape on the front side of the headboard and the footboard and filled with epoxy from the back side, hoping that it would end up with a level surface on the front once all the epoxy had dried. This is Chris from the future. It kind of worked putting the epoxy on the back side, but I still had to flip it over and do some finishing touches because it didn't go all the way through on a lot of the deeper cuts. Okay, back to the video. With those parts put aside, I was able to start milling up the top and bottom rails for the footboard and the headboard and doing the epoxy work required there. In all my infinite wisdom, I didn't use proper angles when I was designing everything in SketchUp. So I had to manually figure out based on the physical pieces what angles I needed to cut so I'd be able to create the bevel required on the headboard and the footboard middle sections. I'm super happy with how this miter cut came out. I left my dominoes on a loose setting so I was able to clamp them in just a little bit tighter, but all in all this worked way better than I thought it was going to. Now let's keep in mind that this could be done with other joinery methods like pocket holes or even a doweling jig. For me using the domino was just a simple and effective way to be able to achieve the look I was going for with no hardware or visible fasteners. Maybe I'll get good enough one day that I can use proper joinery methods like mortise and tenons. If you watch my video about the plywood chair that I built, you'll know that I'm a big fan of assembly and measuring once assembled. That was the exact case with the top and bottom rails on the footboard and the headboard, so I could get the exact angle required to attach both pieces. I wasn't quite ready to glue up the headboard and the footboard of the bed. I had to first create the side rails so I'd be able to line up the angles of those pieces. I really want to say how much I appreciate the support that I've been getting in this community. If this is your first time here, it'd be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, or even hit that notification bell. That lets YouTube know that this is a video worth sharing with other people that might be interested in the same kind of projects. Thanks guys. Now, moving on to the part of the build that gave me the most anxiety, which was cutting out the slots that would attach the sideboards to the headboard and the footboard. This for me was absolutely the most daunting part of this entire build to the point where it actually kept me up at nights trying to figure out the easiest way to do this. What I landed on for the hardware, which I'll link the Rockler hardware that I used below, was to create a jig so I'd be able to repeatedly cut out the slots required for that hidden hardware. Truth be told, I did go through three iterations of this just to make sure that I had it dialed in just right. But in the end, this was such a simple process and I'm glad I took the time to think through it 
because the harbor fit in so incredibly well. I used the same jig to cut the slots for the opposing hardware on the legs for the footboard and the headboard. In retrospect, if I was to go back and build this bed again, before gluing everything up, I would take the time to do all of my chamfers and do a little bit more finish sanding before everything was assembled. Back to the sideboards, I did add a rail on the bottom edge on the inside so I would be able to have supports for my slats that ran across the middle of the bed. And those were attached first with brad nails and glue to hold them in place and finally with screws. With the glue dry on the headboard and the footboard, I was able to move on to some of the final details which also include installing these blocks to bring my middle support back to 90 degrees. In preparation for finish, I sanded everything down to about 220, and then I actually brought the pieces inside to apply the Osmo as my finish. I think that applying finish is the ASMR of the woodworking world. The Osmo made everything just come alive, and it felt so good to finally be at this point in the build. Carriage bolts are the ultimate DIY hack for making any kind of leveling feet, and I did this across the middle section of the bed for additional support for all the slats. And with that, the bed was done. I told a friend a few months ago about this project, and he had suggested I check out Haven Mattresses for our new bed. Haven is a Canadian company that builds their beds out of a plant-based foam. Appreciate knowing that the bed that I'm sleeping on isn't off-gassing all sorts of gross chemicals as I sleep. Besides being one of the most comfortable beds I've ever slept on, one of the things that really sold us on Haven was their charitable model. It's pretty cool. For every 10 mattresses that Haven sells, they'll donate one to a local charity. If you want to learn more about Haven, I've put an affiliate link below, as well as a discount coupon, so if you're looking to order a bed, you can get an extra $50 off your order. Thanks, Haven. This project was a total win. We are so happy with the way it turned out. If you want to check out some of my other projects, I've linked a few right here. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the next build.